Hey there, yoga teachers. We are back today talking about the Yoga Alliance core competencies. Today, we're looking at professional essentials and what Yoga Alliance is asking for and what we included in our training for the very first heading under professional essentials, which is teaching methodology. Welcome to the Yoga Trainer Fast Track. We help experienced yoga teachers become trainers in their very own yoga teacher training school. If you wish it was easier to have your own training, like and subscribe to get free resources. Let's get started. We're looking at the Yoga Alliance website under the elevated 200 hour standards, and you'll see all these core competencies here. And today we're looking at teaching methodology in the guidebook, which if you're trying to write a manual, you're definitely using this guidebook. It's like, you're probably going to print it out. You're going to look right here under core competencies, starting at page 43. We've already done videos about techniques training. The first one, anatomy and physiology, anatomy. We've done the yoga humanities history section. And now we're going on to a professional essentials. The first subcategory is teaching methodology. This whole professional essentials is 50 hours of your 200 hour training. And when we first did the online training and we did the up leveled standards, only 40 hours was allowed to be online. That was pre COVID. And so none of these categories are in our online training because we weren't allowed to do online training back then. Pretty interesting, right? How everything just shifted. But the reality is we don't know what's going to happen when COVID eventually leaves our realm. And we don't know if Yoga Alliance is gonna go back to its pre-COVID online standards or if they're going to expand a little bit. So we're leaving our training formatted to the way it was prior to COVID. Yes, we're teaching it online now, but who knows what it'll go back to. But we do have quite a few hours in even just this first competency, I believe. So in the professional essentials category, it's 50 hours total have to be in professional essentials. And then there's 15 hours of electives that can be spread out. In these first one, two, three, four, five core competencies under professional essentials, we have 27 hours of the 50. I think when I'm looking at our syllabus and recalling what we put into our training, a lot of that has to do with how experiential our training is. That's how we design the program. We have this strong belief that people learn from doing and are use the thing to teach the thing mentality that we use and love. Um, so, you know, the very first core competency is sequencing. So instead of telling people how to sequence a class, we actually have them reviewing pre-made lesson plans and trying to analyze for themselves why they were sequenced the way they were. Of course, there's guidance and question and answer opportunities with the trainer, with us. We give them some insight about categories of poses and how to build to peak poses and how to theme your classes and things like that. But a lot of what we've included and perhaps why there's so many hours is we're not just lecturing them on how to sequence a class. They're actually figuring it out from for themselves by analyzing so many pre-made classes, which students really appreciate. I think the information sinks in a lot that way because they're understanding it, not just hearing it. Yeah. And I think when, when Yoga Alliance in the core competencies guidebook is saying, you know, how do you prepare trainees to safely teach a well-rounded class? What sequencing tools are provided to trainees. That's exactly what you're talking about. But what's kind of interesting is like, you can look at a, a yoga lesson plan. You're gonna hit a lot of these core competencies. You're gonna hit like asana, you're gonna hit having in a whole sequence, you're gonna hit meditations gonna be in a sequence depending on the style of yoga you teach. So as the trainer, and when you're writing a manual, you're deciding, okay, here's this lesson plan, part of it's asana, part of it's meditation, part of it's pranayama, part of it is sequencing. And then you're also hitting on all these other aspects of the core competencies, which are pace, environment, cueing, 
class management and the guidebook has a lot of requirements around this so like when it comes to pacing what pacing techniques are covered in your training how do these concepts prepare trainees to teach safely you know what content is covered regarding how to create a safe accessible and welcoming environment and I know for me, like when we went sat down to write our manual, we had both been teaching for quite a while. You know, you know about pacing, you know about environment in your class. You've obviously created it to be a successful teacher. Then all of a sudden you have to take all these subtle things that you've been doing for all those years and figure out a way to explain them in a teacher training. Yeah, and again, we use a lot of experiences. One of my favorite activities that we have in our offering is we play a game essentially called How Long is a Minute? Not that it's to say you have to hold a yoga pose for one minute precisely. Or there, there's nothing right. It's just sometimes, you know, when you're in a posture that you perhaps really enjoy, it may be a restorative posture or a child's pose or whatever your favorite pose is, a minute might not seem long enough, whereas, you know, we'll use my example, one of my least favorite poses is chair, a, yoga, a minute might seem like forever in chair pose. So, of course, we're talking about how you use the breath and your mindset to get you through that minute. But really, it's just about when you're designing a class and you're trying to pace it out, uh, a minute might seem like forever in chair pose. So, of course, we're talking about how you use the breath and your mindset to get you through that minute. But really, it's just about when you're designing a class and you're trying to pace it out, a lot of the times you're working within a time frame. You only have a 60-minute time frame or a 45-minute time frame. So you want to make sure that you schedule enough postures, right, depending on the theme of your class. You have enough warm-ups if you're working towards a peak pose. You have enough recovery opportunities. Um, and all of So it's not just like time management. It's like, what do I have to include in this hour then you've got to fit in some philosophy, perhaps, and some bring some meaning behind the movements. How do you do all that and not go over time? Or make sure that you do fill your time and give people what they what they came for. So it's a lot to consider. And I mean, we don't have to go into every single point, but I think it's really interesting that it falls under professional essentials because all these things like sequencing pace, environment, cueing class management, if you've been teaching a long time, these are the tools you have to know. Like I used to teach at a community center and that community center was busy and there was a class right after mine. And if I did not finish on time, then I heard about it from the next instructor. And if you've ever been teaching a class where the person doesn't finish on time before you, it's, it's frustrating mm -hmm. because it throws your whole lesson plan off. On the other hand, I've been in a class where, you know, I don't know, a conversation would happen at the beginning of the class. And when I first started teaching, I didn't know how to change my lesson plan on the go. And I would be the one going over and the students, if, if they didn't get their relaxation at the end of class, they would be really PO'd. <laughs> so you've got it from both sides. You're trying to please the students. You're trying to please the environment, this, the, the, the studio or everything there's a lot to pass on to help yoga teachers become professional there really is and i'm glad that yoga alliance actually enforces that this is something that we talk about i don't recall a ton of this being in my yoga teacher training back in 2006 when i first took it which leaves you to figure it out on your own which as you're saying we both did and you you can but what I really like saying to our students and, and people that take our program is there's no hard and fast rules about creating a safe environment, about your pace, about your teaching methodology. But these are things you really need to consider that so you have some consistency to what you're offering, um, particularly this idea of creating a safe space. I will share this conversation has changed dramatically in the eight years that I've been offering a 200 hour program. It used to be about, you know, make sure there's no tripping hazards, um, you know, is the door locked, things like that. Now we're talking trauma sensitive state place. So the conversation has changed and there's a lot, like you said, to unpack. And this category ended up taking 27 
hours of a 200 hour training. There's, it's really important information for sure. Yeah, that's so true. What you said about trauma sensitive training, being aware of like little how you're creating a welcoming environment and little microaggressions that may exist in your studio without you even realizing all of that you want to cover in your teacher training. So we we're we're covering that in the yoga trainer fast track and we're always updating that as well. You know, we want to learn and let this training be a growing entity, not stagnant. So I think it's um it's really important that these topics are in there. Yeah. And then other things that we look at are um cueing that's in this category as well how you manage your energy so many considerations but a really great topic i agree with you Aruna. if you're trying to write your own program you're going to want to print out this handbook maybe even go back to a video that we did on our post-it note system get every idea topic concept that you want to cover and try to figure out where it fits because this professional essentials category i feel it brings in a lot of other things. So you can um, easily be sort of talking about professional essentials, but you might have sections that are moving into other categories and it'll help you with the post-it notes to be able to move them around. Mm -hmm. If you want a ready for you done program, give us a call. That's what we're here for. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> just to add one more thing, I'm, uh, this just reminds me of the old categories, this teaching methodology. This used to be a whole a whole category under the old standards. There was a there were five core competency main categories, and one was teaching methodology. And I think it's that important to warrant it. So I agree. We've got that covered in the training. And we, if you want to use our training, you're welcome to use it. If you're trying to write your own, you're going to have fun writing these. This is really important stuff. It's stuff you probably already know. And you just need to sit down and kind of observe yourself and the things you're doing that you may not even realize you're doing because they're second nature to you now. Those are the things that you want to capture for the teaching methodology. 